If you want the world to know, we won't let hatred grow. Put a little love in your heart. And the world will be a better place. And the world will be a better place. Okay, that's enough. I <laughs> could sing that all day but that I didn't come here to sing and nobody wanted to hear me sing so let's get into it welcome to a special holiday edition of Nostalgia Lane this used to be a monthly series of videos uh, I stopped doing that monthly a few months ago uh, but I did say at that time that uh, I could bring it back occasionally uh, and this is an occasion to bring it back, the special holiday edition in which I will cover Scrooged, the 1988 film starring Bill Murray. So, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this series of videos that I used to do, Nostalgia Lane, uh, the concept of it is that I go back and watch a movie from my youth, from my childhood, from my teenagehood, uh, that I have not seen in a very long time and let you know how I think of it now. And I break this video down into four parts. Part one being why I chose this film for Nostalgia Lane. Uh, part two being what I thought of the film back then when I first uh, saw it. And then uh, part three being what I think of the film now uh, after having rewatched it for the first time in a long time. And then part four, I close off with my rating out of 10 with one being the lowest possible score and 10 being the highest possible score. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it with part one. Okay, so part one, why I chose this film for Nostalgia Lane. So I don't do Nostalgia Lane anymore. <laughs> so this was definitely a spontaneous, out of nowhere uh, decision. Um, not completely out of nowhere. It started with a live chat that I did uh, at the beginning of December. And I was talking to the people in the chat about Christmas movies and talking to them generally about how I don't like Christmas movies, which I'm going to get into more detail of in the part two of this video. Um, but I was talking about that and I was thinking about Scrooge and I was talking about how I liked Scrooge and then uh, the next day I turn on my you know Xfinity Wi-Fi cable thing and there on the big screen is an advertisement for Scrooge free until Tuesday um, it turns out though it's also on Paramount Plus so I don't have to worry about um, getting it for free from Xfinity. You had to be a, like a bonus member or something, whatever, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so it's on Paramount Plus, but that made me think of watching it. Uh, so I was like, you know, you know, one night I was not feeling well. Um, I was supposed to go out with friends and I couldn't because I was sick. So I was like, I'm gonna watch Scrooge and you know what? I think I should do a nostalgia lane about it. So that's uh, where this all came from. Okay, now we move into part two, what I thought of the film back then, back when I first saw it. And actually, though, before I get into the specifics of that, I do have to give a little bit of a preamble about my overall thoughts of Christmas movies, which I just alluded to a minute ago that I, I don't particularly like them. Um, I've never liked or in some cases even watched some of the classic ones. I don't think I ever saw It's a Wonderful Life. Um, at this point, that story has been done a gazillion times over, so I don't feel any need to go back and watch the first time that it was done. I mean, I've seen that type of thing a million times. Um, and uh, Miracle on 34th Street, I do remember seeing when I was a little kid and being completely bored to tears by it. <laughs> Rick and Morty just did a really fun um, parody of it uh, <laughs> where they had the interdimensional version and <laughs> it had a bonus two hours and it was just this dude <laughs> going to these different streets. I'm on 178th Street and there's a miracle! <laughs> and he just kept going 
on for two hours to these different streets and declaring a miracle. <laughs> and the people watching it, uh, Rick's family, uh, were like, God, this is so boring. And I was like, that's my memory of the actual film. <laughs> it was really boring. Um, and then there's a Christmas story, a movie growing up that I heard from all my peers that this is the greatest thing ever invented and people were always quoting it and going, Double Dog Dare You and all that stuff. Um, and I actually didn't even see it until a little bit later than most of my friends, like probably by the time I was 14, 15 or something like that. And then when I finally watched it, I was like, eh? Like, why do people think this is so funny? Like, I didn't really think it was funny at all. And I will go on record saying that A Christmas Story is the most overrated movie of all time. Of any kind. Forget Christmas movies. Any movies. It is so overrated. I don't understand why people think this is a good movie. It is incredibly overrated. <clears throat> so... And those are my overall thoughts on Christmas movies in general. And then Elf came out with Will Ferrell. It took me a long time to watch it uh, because uh, I don't like Will Ferrell movies and I don't like Christmas movies. I finally um, got bored on a plane one time and watched it on my flight and uh, during the Christmas season. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But, of course, I don't think it's as great as other people make it out to be. Um... I do have nostalgia for some of those Christmas specials that were made for children in the 70s and 80s, like The Grinch, Charlie Brown's Christmas, um, Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I have nostalgia for those things, but those aren't films. So I'm talking about films. Um, I just never liked them. But there is one story in Christmas lore that I always did like, and that is the Charles Dickens Christmas Carol, uh, which I was first introduced, uh, I think, to the Disney version with Uncle Scrooge being uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Um, I think that was my favorite version. Or I probably was introduced to the Muppet version first, actually. Uh, there was the Muppet version and the Disney version um, that I was into, both of them. And then a lot of the shows that I watched, I remember that Family Ties did a version with Alex P. Keaton <laughs> Michael J. Fox being Scrooge. Uh, so it was a story that was done a lot. And that was one that I always didn't like. Um, and I think because when I was younger, I was really into the supernatural. I was really into ghost stories. So that's probably why. But now looking at this as an adult, I really like the idea of a rich dude realizing what an asshole he is. And being nice to people. Like I like, I like that idea. Um, so I always like that story. That brings us back around, finally, after all that preamble, to Scrooged, um, which was released in 1988 as a, and it was presented as kind of a modern day take on the classic Charles Dickens tale um, starring Bill Murray. And um, when I saw the movie, I, th I thought this was perfect. Like, <laughs> of course they should do this. They should definitely update that story for the modern era. I'm modern in quotes because this is 1988 we're talking about. Um, and of course it should be Bill Murray who stars in it. And he was the perfect casting to be the lead role in this film. Um, so I came away from this movie being a not Christmas movie person. Um, feeling overjoyed with it. Um, and that song that I sung to you at the beginning is how they close uh, the movie, uh, first with the cast all getting together and singing it, and then they, um, the credits roll with the Annie Lennox and Al Green version of that song, which um, was played on the radio a lot when that film was out. And still to my to this day my favorite version of that song i actually had never heard of that song prior to watching this movie i know now that it was a cover but i thought it was a new song at the time um and that ending always was uplifting to me um most christmas movies do not make me feel uplifted they just uh, make me roll my eyes but this one legit made me feel uplifted uh, both with bill murray's speech at the end and just the song at the end, I just actually literally felt um, uplifted and really, really enjoyed it. Um, but as far as um, Bill Murray being the perfect casting for this film, he, the comedy he delivers is so great. 
all throughout. I remember uh, really <laughs> liking just how crazy he was acting all the time <laughs> about the ghost and doing things like going, ah <laughs> Just cracking me up. Um, and the comedic timing was just so good. Now, I've never been a huge fan of physical comedy. That's never been my favorite type of comedy. But Carol Kane and the physical comedy in here has just been, it's just so good. And I always thought that, um, from the beginning. And, um, I remember, um, seeing the hot, hot, hot guy, uh, David Johansson, also known as Buster Poindexter, who is known for the hit song, Singin' Hot, Hot, Hot. He <laughs> turns up in this film playing the Ghost of Christmas Past and is so perfect. One of my laugh out loud moments I remember when I was uh, younger watching this film, I would have been 14 years old at the time, um, is when he walks through the door and you just assume Bill Murray also can walk through the door, but he hits the door at first and uh, David, David Johansson comes out the other side. Ah, ha, ha, I love that gag! Oh, again, comedy of uh, physical comedy was not my favorite at the time and definitely is not now um but that just worked for me um it's just the comedic timing was just so good uh this is top-notch professional comedians uh, during this film um and doing a story you know about a rich guy who like figures his shit out and um i didn't you know get too philosophical with it back in 1988 so we'll save that more for part three um but i just really thoroughly enjoyed this film and watched it many times it's one of the only probably the only christmas movie other than perhaps national lampoon's christmas vacation where i would watch it on repeated occasions year after year although eventually i did stop watching it which is why it qualifies for nostalgia lane because it has been a while um so anyway, let's now go ahead and move into part three, what I think of the film now after having just rewatched it. All right, now let's talk about part three, what I thought of the film after my recent rewatch. So I gotta start with the intro because I completely one million percent forgot about the intro, which is when they are showing um, commercials for... Um, this network that Bill Murray is running, um, and it's <laughs> basically parodies of Christmas movies. And the first one is like uh, Santa with uh, machine guns, and Lee Majors is coming to save the day. <laughs> and Lee Majors, who remembers Lee Majors anymore these days? People watching it now for the first time, I'm like, who the fuck is that? But I knew who he was from the Six Million Dollar Man. Um, but Anyway, it reminded me of Violent Night. Like, I actually haven't even seen any uh, trailers for that movie. I just have heard about it. So I don't actually know how seriously Violent Night takes itself or how ironic it's supposed to be. But it does remind me of that concept. So I, I do kind of find that pretty funny. Um, also, um, I did remember David Johansson uh, being in this. I remembered Carol Kane being in this. There's other actors that I had forgotten were in it. Uh, a young Alfre Woodward. This almost certainly was the first time I ever actually saw that actress. In fact, I'm pretty sure that when I saw Star Trek First Contact, I was like, oh yeah, that's the uh, woman from uh, Scrooged. I think that's what I knew her, of her as. Because I think that was probably the first thing that I saw her in. Was, this is pretty early on in her career. She's got the 80s hairdo going. <laughs> She's pretty young. Um, and she does well in this film. She, she uh, plays a good role in this film. Um, also, um, I could have looked the guy's name up, but, uh, I've decided to instead call him the dude from the Deep Space Nine episode, Invasive Procedures. <laughs> so, uh, you of my Star Trek fans who are watching this, um, you know what I'm talking about. It was the episode, uh, in the first season of Deep Space Nine, I think it was the first season, uh, where... Um, this Trill dude goes and steals um, Jadzia Dax's uh, body, or uh, sorry, her um, her um, symbiont, and he becomes a Dax. 
And um, when I recently rewatched that episode, I was like, that dude has been was in a lot of 80s movies, but I can't remember what the fuck he was in. One of them was Scrooge. <laughs> He's in Scrooge. But he bounced around in a lot of 80s movies. I just don't remember what. Um, but uh, I could look up his name, but I'm just going to call him the dude from Invasive Procedures. <laughs> it's, it's, in this, it's in this movie. Um... So, yeah, it's kind of fun seeing uh, who all was in uh, this film. Oh, and also, before I move on, I also have to mention Bobcat Goldwave. I forgot all about that dude. I forgot that he's in this movie. Remember how popular he was in the 80s? Like, what happened to that dude? Um, Anyway, he was fun in the film as well. So, um, moving on to how the comedy translates uh, nowadays, because... I wasn't a huge fan of physical physical comedy then, and I certainly am a, am not now. But I still enjoyed it, and I think this is very much nostalgia powered, <laughs> just because I just enjoy the movie, uh, and I always have. So that just uh, still carries over today. You know, twenty years later, um, twenty years probably since I last. Uh, saw the film it probably would have been in the early 2000s since I last saw the movie um yeah it still carries forward that even though like if basically if this movie came out right now I wouldn't care for it that much because I just don't like the physical comedy um but it all still worked for me I still cracked up at all Bill Murray's antics I still cracked up when he went aha Oh, it was still it still holds for me and this could just be purely nostalgia powered uh but it still holds for me um now let's move on and talk about the more philosophical nature of it the rich man who sees the light and starts giving to poor people and becomes kind and, you know, it's, this is just not something I thought a lot about when I was 14 years old. I was just still kind of learning about the world around me and how the world works. And I didn't quite understand at that point in my life how much the wealthy really, truly oppress the less than wealthy. And that was true in 1988 and has become progressively more and more so as the years have gone by. Um so watching it now, having the political uh, leanings <laughs> that I do, um, yeah, I do enjoy uh, seeing a story about a rich dude who sees the light and um, finds his humanity. Um, I think, you know, the caveat to that, though, is that this is only going to work with a rich dude, you know, the story about a rich dude finding his humanity and finding his soul is only going to work with a rich dude who had humanity and a soul to begin with. So this is very much the story of a guy who um, grew up in humble beginnings and uh, then became really ambitious and really driven and turned into an asshole rich dude. Uh, as he grew up, but he didn't start off that way. Whereas if you look at the billionaires, the people who hold all the wealth, it's generational. Elon Musk uh, didn't become who he is because he's some genius who invented some new car. His wealth came from his father. His father was also a multimillionaire. Like this, it's generational. And if you're raged that way, I don't know if you ever have a soul to begin with. Like, I don't know if Elon Musk could ever be a Scrooge because I just uh, don't know that he has anything to go back to the way that Bill Murray's character, uh, Francis, does have something to remember and to go back to. And I think that's why the film was so effective uh, because it uh, is a, the story of a man who has found something that he lost. Um, and that, I think, is why it works so well. Um, but I think if you were to do a real-life application to this, if you were to have three ghosts visit a rich dude, three ghosts visit Donald, Donald Trump, he wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, or three ghosts visit Jeff Bezos, he wouldn't care. Um, but I can't think of a real-life example. But somebody who um, perhaps at one point in their life did have some humanity, but went astray and uh, went uh, to... 
turn to not caring about people and and uh, being driven by money that kind of a person could find their humanity but it's a good story it's and i think that was really what really drives me to this film and i think that's probably what drove me up to the original christmas carol way back when i was a kid and when i first started watching the muppets and the uh, disney versions of this by the way i did eventually read the charles dickens original <laughs> after seeing the muppets and the uh, disney version <laughs> and all the other versions that i saw um but i think that's what really drew me to the story in the in the first place uh so it's a good story and uh, bill murray's speech at the end now Watching it now, I was definitely suspending some disbelief that they really would ever allow this random dude to go on TV and do this thing. And that people would care about some dude they'd never seen before. Like, maybe they've seen some news story in the back of their head about uh, the, the uh, president of this. Uh, I mean, can you name the president of ABC or NBC? or you know, I can't. <laughs> so nobody would care about this guy. So it was a little bit of a suspension of disbelief. But I love uh, the speech, <laughs> and it is so Bill Murray, it is so quintessential uh, Bill Murray, and I love the delivery, and um, as I mentioned before, I loved uh, when I first saw the song and how uplifting that was, and I still feel that today, so the film just still really works for me uh, in a way that... I wasn't necessarily expecting, I wasn't sure what I would really feel about this film watching it now, um, but it all still works for me and I can you know think about it in ways that I wasn't able to think about it when I was 14 so in some ways it works for me even more than it did uh, back in 1988. All right let's move on to part four which is when I give my rating out of 10 and this is my rating based on my recent rewatch of the film. So one is the lowest possible score 10 is the highest possible score. And the rating that I'm going to give for Scrooged, starring Bill Murray, is an 8. Now, I want to kind of give it a 9 just because of the enjoyment that I received from uh, rewatching this film. But I have to just look at how nostalgia-driven my <laughs> enjoyment is and the fact that if this film were to be made today and I would be forced to sit through it, I would not like it because I just don't like physical comedy. Uh, I didn't like it then, but I definitely don't like it now. So my enjoyment is very much nostalgia-driven. So that's why an 8 as opposed to a 9. Uh, but I still very much did enjoy this movie. Um, <laughs> and, and I am... Uh, overall, really glad uh, that I started talking about this at my live chat a few weeks ago and that I decided to go and uh, watch it on Paramount Plus uh, because I, I did get some enjoyment out of it. It, it is still uh, one of the few Christmas movies I will ever watch and enjoy, and A Christmas Carol is still one of the few Christmas stories that I will ever enjoy. So um, there is that, but I, I definitely got some enjoyment out of it and uh, nostalgia-driven enjoyment, but enjoyment nonetheless, so it is an 8 out of 10 for me. Okay, thank you so much for watching. It was uh, good to be back to do another Nostalgia Lane. Again, this is still not a monthly series anymore, but uh, you never know when Nostalgia Lane might jump up at you. I could come back at any time. Whenever I uh, see a film that I haven't watched in a while and I was like, you know, I, I want to watch that, uh, and I decide I want to review it, then I'll do that. So uh, you may see me again on Nostalgia Lane. Um, but what you will definitely see me is everywhere on my channel, Alyssa Jean's Reviews. Uh, I've got all kinds of Star Trek stuff that I've done recently, Star Trek Top 10s. And uh, this month in December, I am doing uh, my Best and Worst series. So I've done my underrated uh, video, uh, my most underrated show video. So uh, this week I did uh, the Worst Show of 2022 uh, video. The next week I will be covering my Top 10 favorite shows of 2022 um and then also next week i will be doing my year in review of my transition uh, so you should check out all of that and you should definitely subscribe if you have not already and if you're interested in this series nostalgia lane go back and watch the old ones that i did you can uh, go to my homepage and scroll down to the nostalgia lane uh, playlist and you can see all of them and uh give some likes and some comments and then uh, you can maybe convince me to bring it back eventually as a monthly series. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I will see you really soon. 
Goodbye. Thank you.